Uh, and we are very disappointed that Governor Perry continues to talk about the problems we have in Texas, but is failing to take a leadership role in doing something about these same problems. On the other hand, the exceptionally poor performance of the 82nd le legislature is what the overwhelming majority of Texans expected when Joe Strauss was elected speaker. That is why he was opposed by over 90% of conservative Texans. His lack of leadership was evident from the very beginning when the session was unnecessarily delayed at least three weeks and valuable time wasted in delaying the announcement of committee, chairs, and membership. An organized leader would have arrived in Austin on opening day with the committee appointments and assignments ready to be published to the House members to go immediately to work on important business. Yet Speaker Sprouse spent over three weeks to announce what he knew soon after the election was over in November of 2010. Add to that delay the time wasted on frivolous activities of recognizing birthdays, anniversaries, select organizations and events just to appease a few select people and you get about half of the 140 days wasted without any meaningful work being accomplished. The House leadership caused the special session by wasting this time and then holding important bills in committee until near the end of the session. The incredible waste of time was a result of either poor leadership or was purposely done to minimize the passage of conservative legislation by the House. Most likely it was a combination of both. The millions of dollars the special session has cost the citizens of Texas could easily have been avoided. Now, while Governor Perry should not be blamed for the House failures, he will be held accountable for stepping away from the conservative promise he made during the campaign. It seems that when Governor Perry turned his eye towards a run for the presidency, that his heart left Texas and the conservative values he had previously espoused. He failed to veto two redistrict redistricting bills that are disastrous to conservative Texans. The House redistricting bill was, was carefully drawn to punish the House members who had the courage to oppose Strauss because of his liberal leanings. The State Board of Education redistricting bill was redrawn to pay off the liberal left being led by Thomas Ratcliffe, who was committed to advancing the socialist agenda through the Texas educational system. We're also disappointed that the Texas State Attorney General appears to be refusing to take action on the numerous legal and ethical violation charges against Thomas Ratcliffe, a wealthy lobbyist, alleging that he is ineligible to serve on the SBOE due to his financial conflicts of interest. However, there is still time for Governor Perry and Speaker Strauss to do the right thing for Texas. They can begin by passing the TSA anti-groping bill, yes. just as it was written by David Simpson. <laughs> passing the remaining illegal alien bills and passing the remaining right to life bills. If they cannot get it done by the close of this session on Wednesday, then Governor Perry should immediately call for another special session. Thank you. And I too will take questions after. Thank you. Next, I have Robert Gonzalez from the Clear Lake Tea Party. And that's Roberto and Gonzalez is G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. -E I am the current chairman of the Clear Lake Tea Party down there by uh, Space Center in NASA in the Clear Lake area. I'm also a member of the T uh, Texas Tea Party Caucus Advisory Committee. Uh, I come with a different perspective because I am a legal uh, immigrant. I came to the, this country in 67. I came legally and so the immigration uh, battle that we're having is dear, near, near and dear to me because 
Um, I understand what it takes to come to this country with nothing and build something from it and do it right. Uh, we came here, we assimilated, we became Americans. And uh, that is something that's not happening today. And I'll tell you why it's not happening. It's because the people that are coming in here illegally cannot be Americans by default because they are under the radar. And because they're under the radar, they are being taken advantage of by the businesses who are in the construction, in the hospitality field, and in the restaurant, the restaurateurs. And they get to get cheap labor, and they get to uh, add to their coffers at their expense. So they are also victims, I want to say that. And at the expense of the taxpayers. We have to look at this from the prism of winners and losers. The losers are always the taxpayers, whether they're legal immigrants like myself or the citizens who have been here. The losers are the illegal immigrants who come here and are taken advantage of. The losers are those who abide by the rule of law and uh, actually try to do the right things. The winners are a few uh, lawmakers who are actually being lobbied, and I have to be careful how I say this, but being lobbied and being coerced into not passing legislation that really helps the people. Uh, the winners are, again, those business owners that are taking advantage of these illegal uh, immigrants. I'll say this, when we came here on the first day with our Tea Party, or there was at least 20 of us, we told our representatives, we told them this, we're not going to judge you by what you do. We're going to judge you by what you didn't do. And this is important because knowing today what we knew back then in January, that what they're going to do is they're going to go in there and pass laws. There are little things that are just going to titillate you and make you feel good. And the laws that are important, that why we're here today, are not being passed. That's why we're here today. And we knew this. We knew that this was going to happen. And we lost the first battle, and that was the Strauss battle. And here we are today because of that. I'll say this. We got an F, we gave an F to the lawmakers on the immigration bill. We asked them to pass HB 608, relating to the state's agency reports on the cost of service and benefits provided to undocumented immigrants. Why did we want that to pass? We wanted it to pass for one big reason, that is so that we could quantify how much it's costing the state and taxpayers for each one of these folks that come in here and they get under the radar. They're human beings. They get hurt, they have to go to the hospital. They have children, they have to go to the hospital. They, they uh, get public services because there are lawmakers who, go, who, uh, who like to uh, uh, live under the umbrella of being compassionate. But I call that compassionate under opium, and I say that real quick. It really stands for, and it's a drug. I say opium because it's OPM, other people's money. You're very compassionate when you're using other people's money, and that's what's happening today. And we thought at the beginning of the session, because we had a 101 Republican advantage to Democrats, we thought something would have actually happen in the 82nd legislature. Here we are today, nothing has done. Nothing is done, everything is just laying there, and we're right back to where we started before January. So um, we we actually wanted that to pass. Another one, HB 3252, which is the E-Verify. Wow. How hard is it to pass a law that allows uh, the uh, business owners, the small business owners, to go and check whether these people are, are illegal or illegal, and at the same time be forced or a be actually uh, uh, asked to uh, to be law law uh, be lawful. We have a lot of a lot of uh, legislation here that have been laid on the floor and people's trampled over it because nobody's nobody is willing to take the uh, the onus to uh, step forward and be uh, a real lawmaker. HB 301. All these, by the way, died in uh, calendar's committee. Todd Hunter's committee. They all died. They didn't get up. They didn't even get a. They were DOA in calendar's committee. The, I got two more. HB 301, which is the related to the establishment of English as the official language of Texas. When I came to the United States, we moved to Portland, Oregon. Guess what? There aren't very many speak, uh, Spanish-speaking people in Portland, Oregon. It's Lily White. But that's not a bad thing. And I'll tell you why. Because it made me, it forced me to learn the language and it forced me to assimilate and be part of the culture of the American civilization. What is wrong with having an official language which is called English? 
What that means is it saves the state. We don't have to do, we don't have to provide pamphlets with two languages. We don't have to have billboards with two languages. It's actually it's a taxpayer uh, uh, economic issue. It's a budgetary issue. What is wrong with that? It doesn't make sense to me. If they're going to come here, like me, they should be Americans. That's not a. It's not a. It's not a racist issue. It's not you hate um, uh, Mexicans or South. I'm gonna tell you right now, the people that are coming across the border are not. They're what we call other than Mexicans. Okay, OTM. They're Salvadorans. They're Hondurans.